Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas and today's surfboard review is on the Hydra by Lost Surfboards. Now I've got two stock boards. I've got a 5.0 coming in at 25 liters and I've got a 5.1 coming in at 25.5 liters. I'm five foot nine and 160 pounds. Now both these boards are in C4 tech. You guys are gonna love this. Sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. Now, as we dive into the attributes of the Hydra, I want to let you guys in on my process. I do my best to get stock dimension boards for our reviews. So that way I have the same options you have. And my process on the Hydra was I'm looking at the stock dimensions on the Lost website and I'm thinking, okay, which two boards do I want to grab? I see the 5.0 coming in at 25 liters. The five ones coming in at 25 and a half. And then I'm also thinking about the five two. Now I know I want the five one for sure. That's in my leader range. That's actually the sweet spot. And I couldn't decide between the five oh and five two. And I thought five oh, that is nine inches shorter than I am. But my thought process on hybrid boards like this, they're relatively flat. So they're super fast and they have great glide. Look how wide the board is. So it's got good surface area. Look how wide the tail is. There's the surface area. All that's going to equal great speed and projection down the line. Now it's got a relatively flat deck. So it's going to have good flex. And at 25 liters, EPS is really going to float like 25 and a half. So I'm thinking, hey, that 5.0 is looking pretty good. I know another thing that I like about getting these hybrid boards that have this wide nose, I'm having a tendency to like them shorter. Why? Because where I surf and the way I want to surf, I'm always in the pocket. I want to get this board where I want it really quick. So this will catch up here more often if I'm riding a 5.2. This Hydra is quick. It's responsive. It's because it's so short, it'll do a tight turn in a really small pocket. Now I was talking about tight turning radius. We've got to move to the back of the board here because I want you to see the side cut right here. Now I've ridden a lot of boards with side cuts and I noticed that they're always super loose and they have a really nice tight turning radius on top of it being 5.0. Now it has a split diamond tail. And what's interesting about this tail is it's kind of like a swallow. But if you look, it's got the diamond tail look right here. There's a reduction in rail line compared to the point. So it's going to turn really quick. And that's exactly how it feels under my feet. And then you have one on the other side. And it's kind of like a swallow tail with two diamond points. And what I like about the point on both sides, whether we're talking swallow or a tail like this, is it's going to give you a little bit of bite and traction. As you engage the toe side rail, it's going to bite. And then as you get to neutral and then get on a heel side, it's going to grab over here on top of this side cut right here. I noticed that it really digs in nice on the side of the wave when I'm doing a carve. And it lets go when I want it to. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is that when we started the review and we started shooting on the 5.0, I couldn't get off of it. The thing's super fun. We went to a beach break, which you guys have been asking us to do more often. And I started riding the 5.1 a little bit more. So extra flotation, paddled great. I kind of put it out of its element though. When we went to the beach break, it was probably like two to three, little, maybe head high, a little overhead on the sets. And it was powerful and it was peaky. I mean, the peaks, I could go left or right, depending on which side of the peak I was on. And it wanted, that wave wanted to be surfed a little bit top to bottom. And the 5.1, and I think the 5.0 would have struggled too, is because there's not much rail line, it would have had a real hard time getting up into the lip. So on a real hollow beach break where there's a lot of power, I wouldn't suggest the Hydra. I feel like it's a little bit sticky. Now, the other thing that the board was struggling with, the 5.1 at the beach break, was that there was some texture on the surface. So it was bumpy. So it was disengaging the rail all the time. So I was really off balance. Now you got to remember, since I surf point breaks all the time, I'm a little out of my element too. So it was tough on the 5.1 to be honest, but we went back the next day. It was cleaner, a little bit smaller, 
And as the wave had a little bit more line to it, I just needed to surf this particular board down the line and not try and sit in the pocket so much on a wave that's really round and hollow. So if you're looking for a board that projects well, mushy waves, like you East Coast, Virginia Beach, Virginia guys or Florida guys, this board flies. I mean, it'll project over sections and it'll get around little tiny uh, mushy um, flat faced waves very, very well. So the bulk of the review, I rode the 5.0 and absolutely loved it. And I couldn't be happier with the two boards that I chose. Now the bottom contours on the Hydra, there's a lot going on. I've got a straight edge. We're going to look at it together, but I want you to see there's a panel over here and a panel over here. That panel Matt's calling a chimed Hydra hole. We'll talk about those in a minute. Let's focus on what's going on. There's a single in between these two panels. And as I come down towards the fin, it's starting to go into a double concave. And he's carrying that double all the way through the tail. And then now we're starting to run into some V here. So you can see it rocking back and forth. And I think pairing a double concave with the V on a little wide board like this keeps it nice and smooth rail to rail. Now I want to talk about the chimed hydra hole. You can see it right here. There's a line here and here. I'll set it down as I run my fingers across it from right here to here, the edge of the rail is lower. But if I turn it face down like it sits in the water, the edge of the rail line is now higher. And that's supposed to help the board go rail to rail quicker. And when I put it on rail, I'm getting bite, I'm getting hold. And then I'm driving through that turn. The other thing is at the peak or at the top of a top turn, it's nice and forgiving. That's exactly how this board felt. Now I want to talk about the different fins I tested. And I ran a bunch of different configurations. I started with my favorite quad set. So this is the Naked Viking Peregrine size large side fins. And then I have the Pizel medium quad rears. And since this board's so short at 5.0, I kind of felt like it was pivoting too quick. And I wanted to have more of a raked fin in there to tone it down a bit and maybe have a little bit more carving, a little less pivot. So I put the Captain Fin Black Panther fins in. And these are the Dane Reynolds and this felt, this felt great. And you guys keep asking me all the time, can you mix and match quad sets? Absolutely. Remember your side fin is going to dominate. So if you want to carve more, you can have a fin with more raked and then pair it with a pivot quad rear set and you'll kind of get the best of both. Now, I also ran it with a Twin Plus trailer. That's the T1 with the small center fin. Worked great there too. I also got these S-wings and it's pretty classic. It sets up side fins and a small uh, center fin here. I've had these fins for over a year. And what, what got me is some of our community was asking me to review these fins. And if I tried them and I'm like, man, those things look super trippy. So after having them for roughly a year, I'm like, I don't even know what board to put them in. I don't even know what they're supposed to do. So if you look at it, it's supposed to have propulsion. It's supposed to move back and forth because the tip's pretty flexible. Now I have a couple different colors. This is the most flexible for lighter people. And then I have the orange ones, which is a medium. So it really matters because the more flex the fin has, the more propulsion you'll get. I ran the green ones first and they were a little bit too flexible for me. I don't know that I can feel the propulsion. I can't really feel the fin doing this when I'm going down the line, but they have a really cool sensation or feeling underfoot. They're fast. And because it has kind of like this little base right here, it's small. So you'd think it wouldn't be very fast, but it has this cutout right here. And then it goes way back here. So it's got that rake and that hold because the fin's going way past the shaper's dot back here. So it offered excellent hold and carving. And then this just felt like it was too flexible for my weight and how hard I want to push on my rails. So I switched to the medium flex and this felt way better. Now, one of the things that I really liked and kind of caught me off guard about this, these fins is Right when I stood up, I'm trying to figure out if I can feel anything. And I'm like, okay. So I just started going down the line. I'm like, wow, they feel pretty fast. And then I did some front side carves. I'm like, that feels good. 
and it really toned the board down. It almost felt like I went from 5.0 to like 5.2 because I could really draw the turn and hold it and I was generating speed and it really made like a longer turn. But then when I did a backside snap or a reverse, because of this um, cutout back here, I felt like it had good release too. So I was pleasantly surprised with these S-Wings. They're pretty legit and I think it's worth a go on these types of small boards like this they're fast, they, you can carve good with them, and then like I said, they have great release, and I'm pretty stoked. Great fin, lots of fun. Now I haven't mentioned it, but the Hydra's a great paddler. I want you to focus on bottom turn, top turn, rail to rail, real smooth, with good flow. So no hesitation from turn to turn there. This little right quick check turn, nice spray on that, and I like the agility in these small waves. Now, this little left, I have the S-Wings in there. Nice release on that top turn. Kind of get out of rhythm, but the, able to get the board right back on the open face and do some good turns. And I really felt like the S-Wing gave me good speed down the line and good control. Watch this two-turn combo right here. Release, bottom turn, nice top turn right there. Now this, I'm pushing the limit on the little five-foot board. But the S-Wings, like I said, it really calmed it down, able to do some good carves, quick from rail to rail with a nice little whitewash rebound. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Hydra. This is a favorite for 2020. I like it for one to three foot groveling for beginner. All the way to pro level surfers will have fun on it. I also want to mention the C4 construction is very durable. It has great flex. I rode this board for roughly two weeks and it has barely any pressure dents on it whatsoever. So excellent flex and I really like this tech. I think you guys will too. Well, special shout out thanks to Matt Biolas for sending these boards down for review. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like the content. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.